Thank you. It's amazing. Woo. All right, thanks, thanks for watching, and welcome to the second part of the Jacobian extravaganza. So now we'll do a couple other kinds of Jacobian change of variables involving, if you like, an inverse change of variables. So let's continue with our third example. And again, I want to show you that multivariable calculus is just a generalization of single variable calculus. So let's do another single variable calculus problem. So calculate. And this is very interesting because usually you let something u to be 1 minus x squared or something, but here we actually want to write x in terms of u. So if you remember from you know, a, a single variable calculus, what you do here is a trigonometric substitution. So x equals to cosine of theta. So it's interesting. You write your original variable in terms of the new variable. Usually you write the new variables in terms of the original variables. That's one thing. And now you want to figure out what value of theta corresponds to 0 and 1 half. So x equals to 0. Well, an easy value that, co that makes cosine 0 would be pi over 2. And x equals to 1 half corresponds to theta equals to pi over 3. So what this really says, if you take the interval uh, pi over 3, pi over 2, in terms of the new variable, this corresponds to our, our original interval, 0, 1 half. So notice just sort of a backwards thing going on, an inverse thing. And in fact, this will always also be true in multivariable uh, calculus. So that's one thing, and now what we want to do, again, in the previous video, we calculated du in terms of dx. Here we want to do dx in terms of du. So dx will be, uh, dx will be, if you like, minus cosine of theta d theta. How do we get this? dx is dx over d theta d theta. So here's interesting, you can take the derivative of your old variable with respect to the new variables that you found. And that's how you get it. And then we get that integral from 0 to 1 half, square root of 1 minus x squared dx, that's equal to the integral from pi over 2 to pi over 3. Again, the value that makes x equals to 0 is theta is pi over 2. The value that makes x is 1 half is pi over 3, and the square root of 1 minus cosine squared theta, and then r d theta, so minus sine of theta d theta. Again, we wrote x in terms of d theta, but the nice thing is that, you know, you can write this 1 minus cosine squared is just sine squared, if you take absolute value, you get sine of theta. So pi over 2, pi over 3. Sine of theta minus sine of theta d theta. And look, well, we have this minus sign, but also the orientation here is messed up. So it really becomes the integral from pi over 3 to pi over 2 of sine squared theta d theta, and okay, this is not as, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, I will not calculate this, this is a great job for Steve, but <laughs> <laughs> let him do the dirty work, you know, but if you do that, and again, if you really want me to, I can do it, you get 1 over 24, 3 squared of 3, plus 2. Again, the idea is I want to show you how uh, you can do the multivariable case based on the single variable case. Okay, and again, there were three steps here. Here, you define the old variable in terms of the new variables. Then, you figure out what values of the new variable correspond to the old variable. And then you do this kind of inverse, you know, the, the, the differentiation. dx is the old, the old variable with respect to the new variable, d theta. Okay, now let's do that to calculate a very similar integral, actually. 
So, example four, calculate I, no, not, so calculate the integral or double integral over S of square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared and d1, dx d1. I was very, very clever here because I just took this function and added a negative y squared where s is the disk of radius 1. It is 1, namely this one here. This is xy. And this is 1. So this is our s. And as I said, it will be very similar to what we did previously. Because look, before we took our old variables, x, and define them in terms of new variables. Here we want to do the same thing. Because x squared plus y squared is very polar, eh? we want to use polar coordinates. So let's define x to be r cosine of theta and y to be r sine of theta. So here the point is we're defining r and theta such that our old variables are equal to this. And then, the next thing is, we want to figure out what values of r and theta correspond to this disk. But look, r is really the radius. So when you talk about the disk of radius 1, r really goes between 0 and 1. This is r, this is from 0 to 1. And moreover, well, theta here is the angle, and theta really goes from 0 to 2 pi. So the point is, just like this picture here, where we found that theta takes this interval to this interval, here, because we're in multivariable calculus and we're really cool, <laughs> this r and theta take this, this little rectangle of sides 1 and 2 pi and transform it into the disk. Okay? So again, just to write this down, x, y, and s, that's equivalent to r theta being 0, 1 times 0, 2 pi. So the point is our integrals will involve, you know, just a simple integral from 0 to 1 and from 0 to 2 pi. And now here comes the cool thing. Now, before, as I said, we calculated du dv in terms of dx dy, here we want to do the exact opposite, right? We calculated dx to be the old variable with respect to the new variable, d theta, and here's exactly the same thing. So dx dy is equal to something dr d theta, and that something involves, again, partial derivatives, the old variables with respect to the new variables, dx over d theta, dy over dr, dy over d theta. And then, since you want a scalar, you take the determinant of this, and we put an absolute value. And, you know, you might say, why was there no absolute value here? Well, notice there was also this change of variable before also reversed the orientation. So if you're really talking about the interval pi over 3 comma pi over 2, there is no minus sign here anymore. Okay, so what is this determinant? Well, it's determinant of, so we have r cosine theta, r sine theta, so differentiate the hell out of this. So if you differentiate with respect to r, you get cosine of theta minus r sine of theta, okay, then you do r uh, sine of theta, okay, uh, r cosine of theta, which looks absolutely horrible, but if you calculate that determinant, you get r cosine squared plus r sine squared, which becomes just uh, r squared, uh, which becomes r, sorry. Absolute value of r, dr d theta, again, let me, uh, elaborate on this. It's really r cosine squared of theta plus r sine squared of theta equals to r. But r is positive, or at least not negative, so you really get r dr d theta 
That was the messy part. Here comes the playtime. Let's calculate now the integral. So what do we get? Integral, the double integral over s of this weird function, 1 minus x squared minus y squared dx dy becomes the integral over the new region, just like we did here. So integral from 0 to 2 pi, integral from 0 to 1 of square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared, which becomes 1 minus r squared. So it's really 1 minus r squared cosine squared theta minus r squared sine squared theta. So and this becomes r squared. And then all you have to do is dx dy is becomes the Jacobian r dr d theta. theta. And then you just calculate that. If you like, <laughs> if you're feeling very exhibit exhibity, you can do another change of variables inside of change of variables, you know, yo dog. But here let's just do it directly. Integral from 0 to 2 pi minus 1 third. 1 minus r squared, 3 halves from r equals to 0 to r equals to 1, d e theta, and if you like, that becomes, sorry, uh, that becomes integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 third d e theta. So if r equals to 1, this becomes 0. If r become, is 0, this becomes 1, and you get a minus minus. An integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 third is 2 pi over 3. That's all she wrote. <laughs> Yay! Yay! And I really think this deserves a little joke. So, let me tell you a funny story that happened when I was taking multivariable calculus. So imagine, so I was taking multivariable calculus, you know, in Berkeley, there were 500 students, you know, lots of people, and then the professor decided to be funny, and then, so we did some, mod, you know, change of variables, dx, dy, and we wrote it in terms of du, dv, and the professor was like, good thing I didn't change this du, dv, because otherwise you get a dvd, u, okay? Yeah, exactly, his reaction was the same as you. And <laughs> except, imagine, 500 people in the room, 499 people completely silent, except me, I'm just cracking up. I'm like, ah, this is such a funny joke. And suddenly the whole class started laughing. What's this? It's a mochi shaved ice tower. Can you finish it by yourself? Challenge accepted. Tata <laughs> deal.